Smell that? It's time for a swing dance reaction video. It's time for another Jack and Jill competition. Welcome to Street Smart Swing, folks. My name is Jamin Jackson, also known as the Galactic Swing Dance Umpire. I am here to judge some good swing dancing, and I want to give you guys my big fat opinion as a professional dancer and a judge uh, to show you what I think and uh, what I actually look for. So I don't know what this LOTD advanced means, but I can only assume it means that it's a Jack and Jill. Uh, Jack and Jill format is basically a leader and a follower getting paired together to do improvisation. It's such a beautiful part of swing dancing that I enjoy the most because it, it really imitates the music. You have the rhythm section and you have soloists and they kind of dance together harmoniously and it just works out. So. With that said, let's get right into this one and I'll tell you guys what I thought and how I scrutinized this particular competition. Are we ready? And here we go. All right, we are live. Let's get into this. Look at this, so ball 15th. I'm assuming that is, uh, how many years have been doing? Luck of the draw. Okay, that's the name of that, L-O-T-D. Let's see if that means Jack and Jill, which it does look kind of like that. I don't know why people keep changing the names of things. It's weird, but anyway. Now, I see some familiar faces. I haven't seen them dance. Uh, live in a long time, so this is going to be interesting. Man, this band is this band is hot. Yes, let them hear it. Welcome to Swing All Stars. Take it away. Take it away. Here we go. Let's get into this. In the Plano Games. This is advanced level, so let's see if it's actually advanced or even even higher. All right, Jeremy and Isabel. Haley and Alexi. Alright. Oh, Ilario. Wow. Ilario and Kazia. Victor. I don't want to mess up everybody's names. Uh. Alright, we have here Loha and Yoma. Yeah. All right, 
by Ruben and Melanie. Okay, so this is the second round. I like it. It's short. It's to the point. Alright. Yes. <laughs> I like that. All right, here we go. Yes! <laughs> Nothing beats the swing out. This band is incredible, guys. I guess the audience is inoculated from excitement. They're just like looking, just. <laughs> Nice dancing, folks. Uh, shout out to everybody who put themselves out there uh, in front of a big audience like that, live on the internet. You know, we used to say live on television back in those days when TV ended at 12 a.m. Like here in America, they used to have like the American flag and they'd play the Star Spangled Banner and TV would be done. <laughs> but now that we have uh, 24 hour cable and we have the internet and all these wonderful things that let us watch anything we want at any time we want. Now, we have to look at things uh, from the lens of anything you want to see is anything you want to see at any time you want to see it. And that was fun. I felt like I was watching live television. The excitement, the feeling was all there. It was good. The dancing was perfect. Uh, let's see. Now. Now, I use that word perfect. And what I like about that word perfect is it fits into one category of how I judge competitions. And that's the small objective part of Lindy Hop. That's the part that many people will use uh, different words to describe. Some will say words like technique. Uh, others will say different things. But I like to use the word control because simply control for me means can I see a leader and a follower do their role without 
interrupting each other's role. Right? I want to be able to see what happens when the leader sets something up for the follower without the leader being a distraction to the end result and vice versa too. I want to see that. So um, it looked like this was the perfect competition. It was perfect dancing because every couple could do that. So if every couple can do the control part of a competition, should judges just look at the competition and say, well, they had more smoother technique and this and that. They could dance, right? So for me, now I've got to get into some more difficult things to judge, which are more subjective in nature. Not everybody will say these things are subjective, but in, in order for the dance to function, yeah, they are. You can choose to do these things or not, and you can still swing dance. It just may not be as impactful in, in the regard to getting a response emotionally from the viewer, but you can still dance. So control... Uh, if you have those things, you get you can get into the top three, right? Just by control. And some competitions I look at, <laughs> everybody's okay dancing and there's one couple that has control and clearly they're the first place winner because they have that. But in this case, no, everybody, I would say, I would say four of the couples had really, really, really good control. So I can't say perfect, right? It was almost perfect. So that means I can't include one couple just on that bare minimum on the control part. So I like to start with my third place person. So who did I think was the best person at control? I don't know. This is a tough one. Control is important. So I'm going to give it to uh, the third couple that came out, Eladio and Castia. I'm not sure how to pronounce her name. In America, we say, we pronounce the J's like Kaj. Katia, but I'm sure it's a silent J, so please forgive me if I'm butchering your name. <laughs> but the reality is, for me, they had very clear control. I could see the leader initiate something, and I could see the follower clearly finish the idea without the leader getting in the way. They had it the best for me. They were number one when it came to control. And I guess that's because of the style of dancing that they're doing because a certain style of dance makes control look like it's more prominent. Um, and that style means you're just a little bit more elastic. Uh, so most of your movements are very predictable. It's like you can see the bat coming to hit a home run a mile away, right? And it, it's more appealing to the eye to be able to predict what's going to happen next. And let's just say they were able to do that style better than some of the other people who were doing that style of dancing doesn't necessarily mean they had the best control, but in terms of being able to predict what's going to happen, it was beautiful to look at. And so for me, they get third place because craftsmanship is extremely important. We can't just get out there and reinvent the wheel and, cl and claim to love Lindy Hop, right? It drives me nuts. You just can't get out there and be like, I'm going to do my own thing. Forget Frankie Manning. Forget all the people who came before. No, you can't, right? We have this beautiful dichotomy and we're of craftsmanship and artistry, and we're debutized as dancers in the 21st century to respect what came before. That is if we really like swing dancing. So big shout out to uh, Eladio and his partner because they crushed the craftsmanship. And I, it makes me happy to see that they care enough to do some of those traditional moves. Now, here's the great part about craftsmanship. Since nobody really talks about where a lot of these moves came, come from, we don't really know who gets credit for them, right? And I love some of our modern dancers that go around and they teach on a global scale. They repeat some of those moves from the past and it's a beautiful thing. They've built their entire personalities and styles on those moves from the past. And that's so helpful to allow dancers in the future to know, hey, look, this is, this is part of traditional basic swing. And it's important to master those things because just doing that will put you at a whole nother level. And so a lot of the dancers, including the ones that got third place to me, were able to imitate those basic movements with such clarity that it looks fresh, it looks new, and it looks appealing. So big hat off to all those dancers who rep the craftsmanship. Now, a lot of the dancers who came up with those moves, we don't know their names, but they're on a lot of those clips uh, from the Savoy um, uh, spirit moves and a lot of those movements that you see. Uh, from basic Charleston, from the leader coming down in front of the follower and touching the ground. Those aren't modern moves. Your, your favorite heroes didn't invent that stuff. 
right? Those are, those are moves done by people 80 years ago. So thank you for keeping those things alive, even though we don't see those people doing it anymore. So enough of that. Who's my second place winner? My second place winner. This was interesting. Uh, I liked my second place for a couple of other reasons why um, that are not just control. They had another thing that's subjective called timing, right? Everyone's dancing in the swing metronome, so who cares? Everybody's on beat, but that's more of a, that's more of a micro timing. I'm talking about that macro timing. The basic phrasing and the pattern of the music There's you got the four eight counts and that fourth eight count something starts to change to go into another phrase and some dancers are able to embellish that part of the music in a way that amplifies the song even more so and i judge very critically on that uh, sometimes i i penalize dancers for doing it too much or it's just too conspicuous you see everything going to happen within the phrase but i really highlighted when dancers know when to do enough in that spot and not too much, right? So the dancers that had it uh, second best for me for the timing was uh, Florent and uh, Vilma. I loved them. They had an incredible amount of energy, which is a subjective thing because you can go out there and have a face that just is like no smiles at all and people may not like that. But uh, hey, I can't judge you for that if, if the dancing's good. That's just your style. But for me, I liked how their energy on their, in their face and in their body matched the intensity of the music. And they were able to get some timing with the music and the phrases to, to make me want to listen more and, and view them more. So some of those things are intangible qualities. When you put energy behind your movements, it just it, it evokes emotion and it transfers emotion to the viewer. So for me, they got second place just on those two things. And I can tell you, I didn't even like their style that much. Isn't that weird? Like, I don't, I don't really like their style, but I've got to respect uh, how they were moving with the control of the, the technique and where they were, they were deciding to place a lot of their movements to emphasize the changes in the music. So there you go. That, that's, that's who I have for second place. First place for me. First place. Uh, this would have to go to the first couple. The reason I like the first couple is because of that last ingredient, which is the part that a lot of people either are terrified to do or uh, they get caught up in the craftsmanship part and they just imitate everybody else's. And that is creativity, right? This is the part of Lindy Hop that should be really high if we're, you know, 100 years later from the original generation. This stuff should be pretty high, right? And not everybody can do it. So this first couple, Jeremy and Isabel, they had they were doing the traditional moves, pass by, send out, swing out, but they were embellishing it with syncopations that were different. Not just different, but they were placed in time differently, right? Usually I would see people like do a tuck turn, the leader stands in one spot and they spread their legs out and they just bring them back in. That's it. No, they didn't do that. Yeah, he was, he was trying different things with the timing, like wiggling his feet and sliding them in slow. There were just small things like that, and, the, and his partner was trying different things too. She was seeing the visual cues, and, and they were both working together to make those additional rhythms have extra value. Because you can easily do both rhythms at the same time, and it looks cluttered and confusing, and something that was good turns into something that was bad just like that. But they didn't do that. They were the ones, for me, that had the control, and they didn't emphasize the control at the expense of timing, nor did they just get control and timing at the expense of individual expression and ingenuity. So for me, they had all three uh, in a way that made me want to watch them more and uh, possibly even be like someone that's like, hey, show me how to do that move. Right. So as a judge, I'm very, very critical. I like to look at Lindy Hop, not from the lens of someone who just does Lindy Hop, but also from the lens of someone who is not even interested in Lindy Hop. And so if you're that kind of person who's never seen Lindy Hop before, usually they're going to give an, an honest response to what they're feeling. They're not just going to be like, Woo! just because it's their favorite person. And I love that rawness about it. And I try to keep that in my perspective uh, when I judge because... Ingenuity is important to me and it's incredibly uh, important to the art form because that's exactly how it got here. 
So thank you guys uh, so much for watching this video and for all you dancers who love this art form, who are putting themselves out there, you know, highlighting the craftsmanship of this art form, plus adding some ingenuity so that it is inspiring for new dancers. That is huge! And I'm super excited for what you're doing. Now, who do you think should have won this competition? Those are my, that's my pick. Those are my favorite dancers out of that competition. Who do you think should have won? Let me know in the comments section. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, if you haven't done a competition like this, I encourage you to put yourself out there. Do it at least once in your lifetime. It'll, it'll bring about a lot of fear in you, but it's a healthy kind of fear that will just amplify or put a spotlight on what you've been working on recently. And if you can get yourself out in that position to be exposed by people and still nail it, that's, that's pretty good. If you botch it and you mess up and you look at the video and you see why you messed up and you still don't give up and you try to cre uh, fix it, that's good too. Either way, there's pain of neglect, of not practicing, and there's the pain of getting first place and not knowing how to keep climbing and getting higher. So I encourage you guys, put yourself out there, try to do a competition like this once in a while. It will really encourage you and motivate you in a positive way. That is if you do not stop learning and, and working on the dance. So anyways, look forward to hearing your thoughts in the comments section. If you guys want to check out some of my creative stuff I'm coming up with every week, uh, check out the link below. I've got over 25 classes for you. Um, it's really fun stuff. Love sharing it with our dance school online uh, to, just to really keep you guys encouraged to create and come up with new stuff. So with that being said, look forward to seeing you in the next reaction video or one of my classes online. Take care.